Welcome to another edition of DXB Today. Great to have your company this evening. And of course, there's only one place we start. It's all about COP28. Let's have a little look and see what's coming up on the show tonight. Khaled takes us dining at COP28, offering more than 90 dining options spread across Expo City. And Louis speaks to Unilever about their commitment to reducing emissions from its operations by 100% by 2030. Plus, we've got a bit of live music for you as well later on, so stay tuned for that. So, COP28 is upon us. We are fast approaching the end of week one, although, to my mind, it feels like we've been going for about three weeks already. I mean, it has been, it has been, the call at the beginning was for a, 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 a call to arms, if you yeah. like. They wanted, a, they wanted a cop of action. Mm -hmm. And judging by the agreements, judging by the people, judging by the, the business that's being done there at the moment, it is a cop of action. It is phenomenal. And do you know what? So many people are saying that Expo City, even itself, is just alive, you know, yeah. regardless of what's going on. Because as you say, there's a lot of the very serious stuff happening, but it's open to everybody, to families. They're trying to make, you know, COP28 just more accessible. And, yeah. and anything yeah. Expo City is a win-win for me. <laughs> exactly, and it's very inclusive. Like they said, every single day is a different topic. They're tackling different issues, not just climate change. So like we've got health, we've got climate change, we've got gender equality, soil day. So it's very important topics that they're tackling here, and it's great. Talking of topics, big focus on urbanization and built environment for us today, the future of transport as well. Stay tuned for that. And of course, we'll be, crop we'll be crossing live uh, to our COP28 studio, which you might recognize. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, throughout proceedings just to get yet more updates. Um, I did make the fatal mistake though of being a little bit too sure of myself the other day. Um, thought given our experience from Expo, of course. given our understanding of the space, yeah. cruise it, you know, get up there, no more way around, I know my sustainability from my mobility, yes. I know bits <laughs> pieces. Yeah, it's changed a bit. Really? Because the whole, you know, the infrastructure, the, 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 the major infrastructure is still there, but You've got, you've got to remember this is a COP28, this is not Expo 2020. True, yeah. True, yeah. So that, that the environments are different and because of the zoning areas, there's only certain places you can get into zones, etc. So yeah, probably best to check in advance, unlike Mr. Urquhart did. Right, okay. <laughs> and take a map. use the Metro as well. Use That's the Metro. Yeah, what they said it's the best way saying. to get there. No, today is fully COP28 focus. It's, and I mean, as we are going to be, as you say, like we have been all week and, and moving forward as well. But we're not alone, are we, today? It's not just going to be us. We do have a guest co-host coming on the show today. So let's find out who that is. Hi, I'm Dima. I'm an urban design consultant based in Dubai. And I can't wait to join you in the studio. Dima is going to be joining us right here in just a little bit. But first, Khaled went down to Expo City to check out the incredible dining options in the green zone at COP28. Let's take a look. Everything is about food sustainability. So I'm going to check out Sky Food Park and they're going to show us what they're doing in their sustainable steps. Have you heard of the Acai Spot? Well, I am here with Thomas, who runs the operation. Well, it's a pleasure being here with you today. Thank so you. tell us everything about sustainability. Great. So the Acai Spot is a brand um, born in the UAE. It was born in 2015. You fast forward to today, we have 13 locations in three different countries. We get our Acai directly from Brazil in the state of Pará from sustainable farming and the packaging that we use in here in all of the locations is also sustainable. So when it comes to COP, how's your experience so far since it just started? It's been very, very great. Um, the amount of people we're uh, encountering over here, the amount of sustainability practice that we're exchanging with other vendors and other uh, zones as well, it's been very great. Now talking about sustainability, you mentioned to me even you're looking at, let's say, the serving when it comes to packaging, or even the trees, can you let me know a little yes, bit? Yes, actually, yeah, we are very keen on having sustainability. The trees that we are using is full made of bamboos. The clay cups that we are serving the milkshakes and the waters is all recyclable. Even the straws that we are using is also recyclable as well. So we are trying to use as less possible soft plastic as we can. And I think we are achieving that day also in our stores. Well, it sounds very exciting. 
Now you is, told me that I have to try your chicken burger. Yes, of course. But if, if you are a vegan brand, how am I eating a chicken burger? Yeah, so it's basically it's chicken burger. As you can see, there's a difference. But yeah, this is, the name is chicken burger because I just really want the people to know about it. That okay. This is an alternative of a chicken burger. Actually, we don't want the people to be vegan in one day. Actually, this is we just more of a flexitarian kind of a thing. We want the people to come, have a try about it, and then see if you will like it or not. Can you tell us more about food sustainability? How are you tackling that? Okay, the food sustainability. First, after we started with COP28 and with the uh, assistance of the manager to ourselves, the team of COP28 and the Kingdom of Expo, they have introduced us, given us a big uh, door into pieces about the sustainability and our products. Okay, how to use the product, become uh, biodegradable products from our plates, from our cups, from our wrapping paper, even utensils. Now everything is biodegradable. So we have acquired this, and hopefully, which we will do, we will continue for the future. Not after COP28. You know, we want to be like everybody else, a low carbon emission company, or entities, one entity, to have the better for the future of MRS and for Dubai and for the whole cost of by itself, in which we encourage it ourselves and we are go adverts. Well, thank you very much, Wassam. It's thank been you. a pleasure and uh, hopefully see what you do in the future. Thank you, for sure. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Today, we got to talk to people who are taking their part in food sustainability. So what are you doing to reduce emissions? Go figure. Kala goes to COP28, eats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? I know, it's unfair. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, right, on with the show. Now, our co-host today is an urban design consultant promoting uh, walking and cycling in the region through her company, developing policies for the community as a whole. She's worked with organisations like the RTA, the, Ro the Roads and Transport Authority here, uh, to help achieve better infrastructure design and urban uh, comfort in the city. So please welcome to the show, uh, Dima Abarizic. Thanks so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me, Tom. Yeah. I'm not, I suppose a lot of people, when, when it comes to designing and our health and our wealth and our comfort etc a lot of people go hang on how does a road infrastructure or rather a transport infrastructure impact on that but then again as I'm saying that I'm thinking just how long are we spending in traffic at the moment etc <laughs> it has a knock-on effect I'm sure exactly um, uh, it, it what we call this model when you are stuck in traffic or when you are in a you need a car to go to to do one of your daily trips it's a car centric city design or so car centric built uh, built by environment so um, unfortunately our city is urbanized in the region and maybe in the states they follow the model from the united states whereby it's mostly car centric rather than investing mostly in public transport we invested mostly in state of the art brand new fantastic like road infrastructure that is more towards cars in most of the neighborhoods. However, the um, Dubai 2040 a plan and before that the government had a strategic goal to shift the paradigm from a car centric in, uh, infrastructure into a more human centric infrastructure and sustainable infrastructure as a whole. So we were the first city in the whole region to have a metro. Um, no one thought that it's going to work and it worked mm -hmm. and it's now like it, it be, being expanded. Yeah. It, this is the fourth expansion actually yes. for the metro and um, um, uh, of course, the metro is not only one part of the solution. Um, we're looking at the first and last mile, what we call it first and last mile, which is walking and cycling and e-scooters and e-bikes address these issues. So I am right now, um, I've shifted in the past five years, my focus into that piece of the puzzle, mm. which is solving the last mile, first and last mile, and uh, shifting towards sustainable um, uh, modes, and not only sustainable, actually, bringing more joy yeah. to the to the urban uh, fabric and i'm sure like you guys experience it when you walk and you cycle somewhere it's just like the, it's much more rewarding yeah. as an experience it, so it lets you like process the thoughts you become smarter mm -hmm. you become healthier it's good for your pocket yes yeah. that's uh, true. It's, i love the fact you become smarter it's definitely i'm, I'm pleased with that yeah, yeah definitely but i love yeah. what you said about the the first mile and the last mile yeah. because i guess it's the one thing and again especially the metro in dubai yeah. right it is that dead straight line mm. and then it's like well how do we get elsewhere yeah and what else is being done then with regards to you know the walking and cycling community because i know that you debunk a lot of the myths ah. as well because as everybody thinks of the uae as that driving city yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, there's a lot happening and the city has um, like identified a number of areas that uh, we're working towards. One of them is a 20 minute city, one of them is expansion of the metro, expansion of the cycling infrastructure, uh, but um, you're like talking about debunking the myths yeah. mm -hmm. and um, one of them, because I talk about this in a lot of the time to many people from all walks of life and people say, but your weather is like is one of the major barriers into promoting cycling and walking and i'm like a uh, 100 yeah but we have seven months of good weather and we have like three months of uh, awful weather like uh, i'm sorry it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like true. it's like it's a, it's a bit harsh so um what uh, i'll share a study that was done by the epa the environmental protection authority uh, agency in the united states and they estimated that so many trips in our cities are less than a mile long. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about walking and cycling, uh, we are addressing those trips that are three to five kilometers long. And we want to solve that piece of the item. And we, we know that 50% of the global trips around the world are less than five kilometers long. So if we take some of these trips that are currently done by car and actually transferring them to walking and cycling trips, we can achieve so much and we can honestly honestly make driving for the people who choose to have cars actually more convenient because it will have less congestion so we are not fooling ourselves we're not thinking that we're going to do 30 kilometer trips um, from right. uh, al warqa <laughs> to uh, Jumeirah beach uh, any at any given time no we're talking about those short trips in our neighborhoods making it more accessible for walking and cycling and um, for like and more 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 joy in uh, in general and that's true like you said if you start with the small things like walking around the neighborhood people then will go walk around and for longer periods of time but also i heard that you had events happening at cop 28 since cop 28 is still on right now definitely and and uh, what Tom said about the COP event and site, there are so many events that are, are happening off-site. Yes. Around, and that's, I feel the whole city, city is like coming together. Yeah. There's so much like electric energy and nice energy. So I encourage people not only to look at the green zone and the blue zone, zone if they have access, is to look at the events that are happening around the city. Um, uh, there ev like there are like there's an event for any age group at any interest group and in any location as well. They're not centric in like in the CBDs or in the specific neighborhoods. So I've, um, I'm organizing bike rides okay. uh, around the city and for the for different delegates um, that are coming to, to Dubai, which have the pre-notion idea that we are car centric. OK, we have the metro and they maybe they don't have the chance to like they go from their hotel into the venue of the event. But if we take them from that and we take them to show them the infrastructure that we have, mm. uh, talk about the challenges and how we solve them. And uh, there's so much uh, like cross pollination. There's so much positive energy that happens when you get people in the sun and talking and having like uh, breaking bread eating together talking about cycling so I, I'm organizing and I've organized um, um, uh, rides for different different uh, interest groups uh, that are coming to the city and uh, it has been extremely rewarding for myself and um, uh, the feedback that we received from delegates has been uh, phenomenal I love <laughs> it's that. a good way to debunk to debunk uh, everything the yeah, exactly because yeah. the weather is nice yeah. at the moment yeah and they the nice thing is is also they saw that uh, different people from different walks of life yeah. are using the, uh, the infrastructure that yeah. we have yeah. and they and they like they were very curious about the scooters the e-scooters and they were like why do you have all these e-scooters and you know e-scooters have a bad rep in Europe yeah. and you always have the bad new like the bad like negative news items about uh, e-scooters in from Europe but here in Dubai they are solving a problem yeah. they are linking the metro stations to the places of work and a lot of people using them because there's a need for them mm. so I was I was explaining that it's a like it is helping um, uh, people have better quality of life mm -hmm. and better you, uh, autonomy and mm -hmm. better control over their time. And it's, uh, it's um, um, we have solved it in a different way. We have reinforcing the rules in a different way. They're using the infrastructure in a different way. We're separating them from car, from uh, pedestrians as well. So it's uh, it's interesting to see how people come with their ideas and how we can exchange them together and like get information from each other well, that's extremely rewarding yeah right yeah. i mean i guess that's the whole idea as well of, of cop yeah and it's, it's great dima listen we yeah. are you're going to be with us for the rest of the show mm. so stick with us um we are going to take a quick break now but coming up we are going to be chatting with the president of rolls royce meta region about the plan of achieving net zero carbon emissions in their operations so don't go anywhere <laughs> 